I didn't really plan on having children because I had rejected my own femininity. I was going to do really important things. So when I found myself pregnant, I was devastated. It was only in worship several months later, after actually we had already had our baby, and I was in worship and I felt that the Spirit of God was calling me to surrender my life to Jesus again, but this time to the, to the great work of motherhood. It, was, it really was like getting saved. I surrendered to Jesus. Just I embraced motherhood as this new great work I would do for Jesus. It was incredible. It, it caused this incredible sense of purpose and a reawakening to who I was. So our first baby was a boy, and he was what brought me to this embrace of motherhood. But then when we were having our second baby and she was a girl, I was really surprised by my response. I was so broken towards my own womanhood. So here I'm having this baby girl and a wise older friend suggested I ask Jesus why he made her a girl. So when I did, I saw this picture of a planet that was, it was brown and um, dry. It was like a parched, just dying planet. And Jesus said, I made her a girl for the same reason I made you a girl. And then I started to see pieces of green happen on this planet, like this vibrant, brilliant green color started to happen all over this planet. And that was the end. But that was, it was this encounter with God that woke me up to what it meant to be a woman, the privilege it was to bring life to this planet. And so we named that baby girl Eve after the first woman to ever carry life, and Marie after the first woman to carry the Christ. The world's first exposure to God's nature is through the mother. When I was going through a particularly hard time with a child we'll call Her Majesty the Powerful, I felt really impressed just to love her, this profound strength of love. So I would tell her, I love you, I love you, I love you. And um, sometimes on bad days she would even yell back, I don't love you, or no, no, no. And to that I would say, I love you. I'll always love you. Oh, I do love you. We were in the stroller just a few days ago, and I was pushing Her Majesty, and um, I told her, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. It was quiet for just a little bit, and then she said back, I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. We won. The mother heart of God, just this love that is relentless. No matter how hardened someone is, or how much they try and resist God's love, the love of God. I had this incredible camaraderie with God. It was He and I, and we had won. Miracles happen at our house all of the time. Most of the time they have to do with sharing crackers. And someday that peacemaker will inherit the earth. And he just may be the one to negotiate the final peace treaty between Israel and the Palestinians. There is an anointing for the mothers of this generation. If we would receive the calling to be what God has called us to be, the world will be completely altered. The world will see Jesus. The mother is a humble position. We're at home. We smell like burp up. How not glamorous is that? God works through the simple. We are the ones who are shaping the ones who will inherit this earth. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, and the next generation of mankind sits in the lap of the mother. We are amazing. We will look like God to our children, and then they will carry the message of Jesus to the end of the earth. This planet will be saved, and God is going to smile at the mother.